What's up, Pokemon trainers? This is me, Pimp My Pokemon, with episode 8 of my black and white walkthrough. So, we are in Necron City, and we're gonna go over to the cafe uh, to get a special item from the bartender on Wednesdays. So, if you are um, living a Wednesday today, you can go to this bartender and get a soda pop from her, which boosts your, like, um, Heals your HP by 60 points, so that's pretty useful. And here we meet our old friend. We met a couple of cities ago, and he is kind of weird. He was the Pokemon Whisperer, the one who could apparently talk to Pokemon and said, I want to hear your Pokemon talk. And he had a Purloin before, I don't know what he did to that, because now he only has a pit of a Timpole and a Timber, the last two of which are Pokemon you haven't seen before, but you will see in this video, so just watch carefully. And yeah, this whole video will be dedicated to the gym battle, and I will only be using Servine because um, from now until the end of the gym battle, there will only be attack and speed EVs. And yup, so we take down this pit up with ease. We have our really high defense and special defense on my Servine, so it can withstand pretty much everything. And now we have a super effective type matchup with this water Pokemon. It has exactly 0% chance of living. Yup, and now the final Pokemon, Timber, which is actually an amazing Pokemon if you guys still have one slot left on your team. It's a fighting type Pokemon, it has three evolutions, and its final evolution is used in a lot of competitive Pokemon battling. It has a good moveset, a uh, really high physical basis attack. The speed is kind of sucky, but that doesn't really matter with this Pokemon. So yeah, it also knows by just like Petrat, which is its normal counterpart. And yup, so we take that down pretty easily. And let's see what this guy says. It's pretty important to the uh, game. He says, why can't I change the world? I need power. And now look. He goes over to the side. Now I know what power I need. I need Reshiram, the legendary Pokemon. Yeah, so basically he wants to resurrect Reshiram from the bones in this museum. Which apparently you can do in Pokemon games, which is pretty cool. And that is a skeleton of Reshiram, apparently. And this is our host, I guess, who's gonna give us a tour around the place. The skeleton of a dragon type Pokemon. And it was flying and then it died somehow. I don't know how the fuck it died. Maybe an airplane ran into it or something. Now he shows us, oh my god, a rock. It's an old stone, oh my god. In case you guys didn't know, that was sarcasm. Um, I think in almost every Pokemon episode, yeah, they have a museum where they show you some fucking rocks, which is gay, but it's Pokemon. You love it. We all love it. And here is our number one fan, Clyde, who's awesome. He gives us a fresh water to start off the gym with a boom, and that is awesome. And so he's just going to give us some advice. It's a normal type Pokemon. You'll want fighting type Pokemon, but as a second gym, um, it won't be that tough for you guys. I'm sure you guys can handle it. And now we battle a little kid. I don't know why they have small kids working in gyms. Um, that should be against the child labor law. But it's Pokemon again. It's fantasy. But still, it's weird. So he has his little briefcase there. He's gonna uh, use a Petrat. Petrat is like my worst enemy in terms of stalling. It just fucking pisses me off. Watchel is bound to use Detect in this game. Um, yeah, it's attacks like shit. It's just annoying to play against Detect. See, it's just fucking wasting my PP. It'll just make me go and heal. So, yeah. That sucks. So this gym is basically... There are gonna be four memos hidden around in books around this gym. And it's basically like a treasure hunt that the gym leader laid out for us. And she is actually in the floor beneath this, which you can access after you follow all of the clues. So yeah, um, they're asking you which Pokemon did you face first. We obviously know that, but for those retarded kids who can't even uh, remember 
five seconds ago that they faced off against uh, Pritchfat. We have to go to this book, and it is the biology of the Pritchfat, and then it's like, very good. Oh my god, there's a memo on the back. Flame burns inside his body. Okay, this is the next hint. It's like a riddle sort of thing. Um, it's not a Pokemon, even though it sounds like one flame burning and all. But it is actually... Uh, let's see what she says. A locomotive. That's a fucking funny word to say, a locomotive. Who says locomotive these days? Um, why don't they just call it a train? But anyway, she fights off against you and... The scientists in this game, the female ones, are actually quite hard. Yup. Awkward silence. And this... Okay, I need to talk to you guys about this. Now we have... Uh, we're facing off against our first evolved Pokemon. And since it's evolved one stage, as I mentioned in my second episode, it will give us two EVs. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, like Lilypup only gives us one attack EV, her gear will give two attack EVs. But just because the basic Pokemon gave one of a certain type of EV, the evolved form doesn't always give the same type, and usually they give a combination. Like, um, what can I use as an example? Okay, Beedrill. I know for a fact that Beedrill raises your attack EVs by two points, and your speed EV by one point. So, there's some mix and match going on. But anyway, I learned a Leech Seed, which is an awesome move, which I use on both of the Pokemon that the Gym Leader has uh, very effectively. Um, so yeah, that was really helpful, this move, in the Gym Battle. And yeah, so we take that Herdier down, get two bonus EVs in our attack, from, and we go from 33 to 35. If you heat up in a pot, what will... and it tastes delicious, what is it? Basically, it's a Poffin, if you guys remember the Sinnoh region. Um, yeah, we, in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, you could make Poffins and feed them to your Pokemon for contests. I don't think you can do this in this game, maybe you can, I'm not sure yet, but you guys will find out as soon as I do. And, yeah, this is some really bullshit, um, hint, it doesn't help you at all. But basically, you know out of, um, trial and error that she is the only one left in the gym. And the book behind her is the one you have to activate to get a secret, unlock a secret passageway to the basement where our second gym leader is hiding. And then I think like, it must be fucking boring to live in a basement and wait for all eternity in a basement until I come and battle her. And it's like, it's sealed off from the outside, what if she like, starves or like, the oxygen in the room, uh, gets fucked up or something. That would suck. Being a gym leader, apparently it would really suck. In this gym, at least. So yeah, three lily pups. Very stereotypical. All these um, school kids have like these small, cute Pokemon. They're still pissing off. Lily Pup has too high defense and special defense, man. It pisses me off. So, after this battle, I'm gonna go and heal right before the gym leader so that um, I have the best chance of beating her. You guys should also probably go heal because it's just recommended uh, rather than wasting some of your potions and shit. So, final Leaf Tornado and this kills. I don't know why the previous ones did like 70% and this one did a full 100%. I guess the attack varies in strength and also the Lily Pup. Probably different Lily Pups have different levels of special defense, so that's probably why. And now the final one. And once we open this book watch what happens oh my god there's a memo so click and now the bookshelf takes like about 15 seconds to shift over how the fuck is it even doing that like does it have wheels on the bottom or something anyway yeah this gym leader is a woman but she's not any woman you have seen in your life she is a bulky woman she is like you don't want to mess with her. I'd be scared to be in the same room as her. Yup, that's her. She looks kind of like um, Bruno from the Fire Red and Leaf Green uh, Elite Four. Yeah, she doesn't look that womanly at all. And she actually reminds me from Tom and Jerry, you know that big black woman who keeps Tom in her house? She reminds me of that for some reason. Um, I guess because she's black and fat. And where's an apron? Yeah, 
So, another two attack EVs we get from this herd here. He used an Intimidate, so I'm gonna focus on first Elite Seeding him, and then using my special attacking Leaf, um, Leaf Storm move. Is it Leaf Storm or Leaf Tornado move? Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully we can take him out pretty easily. And he used a Leer, which is... I get kind of agitated when uh, Pokemon try to reduce your stats, and again he uses a Leer. So I'm getting kind of worried that if he has some really um, powerful move like Takedown or something, which he does have, if he uses that in this turn, I'm probably fucked. But we'll see because Servine has really high defense. Oh my god, with the sliver of HP, it uses Takedown on me, and its recoil kills itself. Thank god I stayed alive. If I didn't stay alive, there, this would be a whole nother story I would probably lose. And now Watchhog, okay, Watchhog is an exception to the first evolution EV thing rule. So like all first evolutions provide you two EVs when you beat them. Except for Watchhog. I don't know why they've chosen that Watchhog only gives you one, but Patrat and Watchhog both give you one attack EV and that's it. Uh, apparently it's the only Pokemon in all of the versions in the whole national Pokedex that is a first stage evolution and still only gives you one Eevee, so that's kind of gay. I guess because he sucks so bad, um, you don't get anything out of him. So yeah, he is not actually that strong. His retaliate move is only good because if you stay, because basically the move of this gym is retaliate. So when I just killed the herd here and the watchdog came out, retaliate is boosted to double its normal base power because it says that um, your base power of Retaliate increases by double when one of your allied Pokemon just died and you switch in um, on top of them. So yeah, so the, the base power doubles. But initially the base power is also quite high at 70 um, points. So that's, created, that's quite strong. So 140 completely destroys most Pokemon. So you'll have to watch out for that probably switch out to one of your idiot monkeys or an HM's fave right after you defeat her deer so that the retaliate is absorbed by that Pokemon that you don't really give a shit about. So yeah, she gives us a badge which allows us to trade Pokemon up to level 30 and allows them to obey us. And she also gives you the TM67 I think, retaliate. Um, it's base power is 70 so it's better than tackle so I'll probably teach it to my Servine. But to get the 140 base pass, as I said, you'll have to let one of your Pokemon die and then we'll switch in and go loose. But only the first uh, Retaliate will be the base power 140, so it's not really that worth it. And now her husband, who is actually the scientist, go calls her for help because apparently he can't fight off the team Plasma who, are, who have like completely captivated everyone in this. Uh, museum and they as you know they want to capture Reshiram's skull so that they can recreate Reshiram um, I don't know why they go for the skull why not go for like a smaller part but yeah that's the game and I don't know why the museum would let in six people in med medieval costumes into the museum but it's Pokemon what are you gonna do so they take the head so now the statue looks like really fucked up but um, that's not the point. The point is that they're going to try to recreate a legendary Pokemon and rule the world. As always, it's a gay plot that... Uh, and wow, she is actually really big. She is huge. Yeah. If she were a Pokemon, you should definitely catch her. She would, like, dominate everyone. So, yeah. And now we're going to talk to this guy who is actually the Crestelli, I think, city gym leader. And here come my two dopey friends, the Asian kid and Bianca, who I guess we're jacking off in Route 3. I don't know why they didn't come sooner. And please subscribe if you've enjoyed my videos. I'm going to release one every day, as I am doing. And please thumbs up. Thumbs up is easy for you, but it means a lot to me. And please comment uh, to say what I'm doing well, what I'm not doing well, how I can improve. And she gives you the dowsing machine, which basically is, acts as an item finder and ca can help you detect invisible items, which there are. And I have to now go into Pinwheel Forest in the next episode, so I'll see you guys then. 
Uh, bye for now. I enjoyed making this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. See ya.